everyone, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a little spring haul that was based around a wish list that I shared with you guys in one of my previous videos. If you've not had a chance to check that out, I will go ahead and link that for you guys in the cards. I pretty much stuck to that wish list that I shared with you guys. Um, and when I make a wish list, I really think about what I am putting down on that list, um, really critically think about what I'm trying to accomplish by adding those items to my wish list, what the actual holes are in my wardrobe, what I'm needing, what I'm wanting, et cetera. There is one thing I'm going to share with you today that was not on my wish list at all. If I'm being totally honest, it was an impulse purchase, but I'll kind of go into that a little bit later. And before we dive right into the video, I of course need to thank today's sponsor, who is Ana Luisa. I've worked with this brand a few times before, and they are quickly becoming one of my most favorite jewelry brands of all time, the quality is impeccable, the integrity behind the brand is impeccable, uh, and the designs are amazing. Ana Luisa sent me three new pieces to add to my spring wardrobe for the upcoming season. This first ring that I'm gonna talk about today is this rope bold ring. It is absolutely stunning, you guys. Uh, this is such a popular shape right now. It's super trendy, but honestly, it's very classic to me. So this particular piece is a 14 karat gold on stainless steel. I love pairing it with these Paris hoops and these hoops were sent to me previously. Uh, I love mixing and matching the new and old pieces that I get, but the Paris hoops are like the earring version of this ring. I also received this Michelle signet ring, which is in Malachite and it is stunning, you guys. This ring is 14 karat gold on brass with malachite. This green color is just stunning for the upcoming spring season. This color green is also like all over in terms of trends right now. And green is my absolute favorite color. I wear it any chance that I get. The third piece that was sent to me are these Alyssa medium quilted hoops. So I popped them on for you guys, but they are really just the perfect little midi hoop size. They sort of remind me a little bit of the Coco line from Chanel, their fine jewelry line, but I'm not really feeling Chanel these days, you guys, if I gotta be totally honest with you. So I'm glad to have something that kind of gives me a little bit of that vibe without that price point, of course. This brand has super high integrity when it comes to their employees, their manufacturing processes, how they obtain their materials as well. They use recycled materials whenever possible. This brand is so incredibly transparent, you guys. The one thing that is a huge pet peeve of mine, especially with a brand that claims that they are more sustainably minded is when they are not forthcoming about their manufacturing processes, how the people that work for this brand are treated what the factories look like, et cetera. But as soon as you go onto the website for Ana Luisa, you are easily able to find all of this information. It is right at your fingertips and you can sift through all of that stuff really easily. And they really have nothing to hide. And I really love how this brand is so honest and open about all that stuff. Um, and it's just really incredible what they've been able to achieve. And not only that, they're also able to offer these pieces at incredibly low prices for what it is, you guys. So it is plated jewelry. So I would categorize this more towards costume jewelry, even though it does have 14 karat gold plated on top of it. Um, you need to still be careful with it. Um, I would not recommend, you know, wearing this in the shower or in the pool or anything like that. I know some people do and they've had no issues, but in order to really make this last you as long as possible and to keep with a the theme of sustainability, sustainability. Just treat this like you would with any other fine jewelry piece and just take it off before you do those things um, because eventually it can or will wear off. But I've honestly had no issues wearing these pieces on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you have not checked out Ana Luisa, please go ahead and do so today. I will have a link provided for you down below. If you purchase anything from that link, I will not receive any sort of financial compensation. But if you were going to purchase something, I'd appreciate if you use my link because it just lets Ana Luisa know um, that you guys are enjoying these products and you know it'll let them know who sent you guys. 
Thank you so much again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get right into my spring haul. I did share a black top in my community posts and thank you guys so much for commenting on that and giving me your thoughts and opinions about this top. This was from Anthropology, but unfortunately I ended up deciding to return this top. Um, I really thought it was so much fun and of course this would have been a great top to wear at this wedding that was coming up, but uh, I ended up deciding to return it because the sleeve situation, I mean, they're amazing. Those puff sleeves are awesome, but you guys, if I'm being completely honest with myself, I was not going to wear it probably more than just like a special occasion here or there. And for a piece as being as expensive as it was from Anthropology, it just didn't make sense to me. And I'm at the point in my life where it's okay if I have some things that I reserve for more special occasions, but really I want to have like 99.9% .9 of my wardrobe to be versatile. So most of the pieces that I have that I can dress up, I can also easily dress down. And that top just seemed so extreme to me. <laughs> and I know that I just would not be wearing that on a regular daily basis or get much more wear out of it than other than special occasions. And it was just too costly for me to waste my budget on something like that. So even though I did purchase it, I did end up returning that. So I completely forgot to mention these jeans that was paired with this top in this video. So I really apologize for that, but I picked these up secondhand. They're a cropped uh, denim that I was looking to add from my wish list. And they happen to be from Loft, which is not a brand that I uh, purchased from very much, uh, if at all. And um, I just thought it would be a good way for me to try out the style at a really low price point to see if I want to invest in a higher quality version down the road. So uh, that's uh, the story behind those pants. Moving on to t-shirts, I did purchase two t-shirts from two different brands. I did end up purchasing this organic cropped tee from Everlane. While it's not the most opaque thing in the world, I definitely cannot see my bra underneath it, which is what I'm going for. Uh, so the only thing that is slightly out of my comfort zone is that it is a little bit more cropped than I'm used to but I'm willing to try it out and kind of see how I like it. I only ended up purchasing one of these t-shirts because I really want to see how much wear I'm truly going to get out of this t-shirt. And if I do raise my hands up, I will end up showing off like the very edge of my bra. Um, so I just have to kind of keep that in mind, but it is honestly going to be a great top to wear in the later parts of spring going into summer when the weather starts to shift and it starts to get hotter. So, um, and, Honestly, other than that, you know, the sleeve length is amazing. The quality is there and the price point was really good too. The other t-shirt I ended up buying is the one from And Other Stories and that one, you guys, the quality of this t-shirt is impeccable. So this is a heavier cotton and it's definitely thicker than any of the other t-shirts I had in my closet. And I love the oversized exaggerated sleeve length. I totally forgot to mention that the size that I purchased the Everlane t-shirt in is a medium and I ordered a small and a medium in the And Other Stories t-shirts just because it said it was a little more boxy and oversized. I ended up keeping the small and honestly, I probably could have even gotten away with an extra small. It definitely is quite oversized, but this is more of the length that I am going for when it comes to like a t-shirt for me, a basic t-shirt. I like it to be slightly cropped, just enough that I can like front tuck it. And I could actually tuck this top in completely if I wanted to, it's long enough for me to do that. But I'll probably just be doing like a basic front tuck with this top. It is so incredibly comfortable. Um, and again, it's just made very well. So um, I only ended up purchasing one of these tops as well because I ended up realizing that between the new Everlane top and this new and other stories t-shirt uh, and in combination with the last remaining uh, t-shirts that I had from the previous season that are going to be need to be recycled at the end of this season because they are going to be too worn out and they're too large, almost too large for me. 
that in total, I'm going to have four white t-shirts between all of those. And that's going to be more than enough to get me through spring and summer just fine. And I'll be able to see kind of how I feel about the Everlane shirt and the And Other Stories shirt at the end of that season and see what I want to repurchase going forward. So while these are basics in my wardrobe, they are workhorse basics, meaning that they get used all the time. I wear t-shirts and jeans like pretty much on repeat in the spring and summer seasons. But I also need to keep myself in check and make sure that I'm not over purchasing these items to the point where I won't be able to wear all of them and you know, use them up, wear them out, etc. So four is a great number for me and I can't wait to wear those. I have two items from Saison to share with you today. The first one is incredibly exciting because I found it secondhand. And not only did I find it secondhand, I found it locally to me at my local consignment store. And because it was there, it was priced ridiculously low. You guys, I paid $16 for this blouse, which is crazy. This blouse, I believe retails for around $130. So the savings on that is insane. I'm not exactly sure which blouse this is, but if I had to take a guess, I believe it is the Alex blouse. It's this really pretty brown orangey color with navy polka dots throughout. And this is in the size 44, which converts to a US size 12. Now this blouse is actually a little bit large on me. It does fit me in the arms appropriately, um, but it is larger around the midsection area and the sleeves are quite long. I will be wearing this top tucked in. So it actually looks really good being slightly oversized there. Um, just how it balances out the proportions when it is tucked in. And I have worn this blouse already one time and I did end up just pushing up the sleeves and they ended up working out fine. But you know, if I am going to keep this long term, I'm probably going to have to get those sleeves tailored a little bit just so that I can wear them without them just looking really sloppy. Um, but I'm gonna play around with it as is and just kind of see if I'm able to wear it as is or if I need to get it tailored or if it's just not going to work for me at all. Many of you may already know this, but this brand has a very strong following behind it. And before I get it tailored, if I find it's not working out for me, I am going to try to resell it in some of the Saison groups that I'm in because there may be somebody who is looking for this specific top. It's definitely nice. I was looking for a nice silk blouse um, or just a blouse in general to add to my wardrobe. It's not something I'm gonna be wearing on a daily basis, but when I do want to dress up just a little bit, um, it's definitely a great piece to have. The other thing I purchased from Saison actually came from the website directly. I bought a pair of the Austin trousers. Now I did purchase these in two different washes in multiple sizes. I'm not gonna share that try on experience with you guys because I do want to repurchase the other pair that I did not end up keeping in possibly a smaller size. So I wanna wait until I can compare those sizes again and just repurchase them again and show you guys that whole process and how everything fits um, in a later video. So I ended up keeping the washed black version in the US size 10 or a 42 in Saison. Now, another thing that I wanna give a little bit of criticism on for this brand is the sizing charts are like non-existent and it's really not helpful when you're trying to determine what size you need. They will sometimes make notes um, on the actual listing if um, they recommend you size up or size down. And if I'm being totally honest, I would take that with a grain of salt. So I am a regular US size 10 right now. I'm pretty much consistently fitting in size 10 pants and the washed black version I felt fit quite well for me in that size. I might have been able to size down to an eight, but the waist just was kind of perfect. And um, when I'm wearing these throughout the day, they do get slightly baggy around the knees, but it's not something that looks sloppy or bad in my opinion. I think it looks fine. And I'm actually able to wear these multiple times before I actually have to wash them, which is like huge for me. That is something that is a big criteria for me when it comes to denim. I want to be able to wear it multiple times before I wash them because it just prolongs the life of that garment and it just keeps it looking better for longer. The other pair I ended up ordering was the washed denim version, the blue denim version. And I ordered those in a 10 and a 12 
just because I was not familiar with the sizing. And honestly, I most likely would have to need an eight in this particular pair because of how much stretch there was. I was a little concerned that they were gonna get too stretched out and not end up looking great by the end of the day. I really wanted to try a couple pairs in the trouser version, but unfortunately none of those were in any of my sizes or possibly any of my sizes. So if you are looking to order this particular style of pant from Cezanne, I would recommend maybe ordering at least two, but maybe even three sizes, because just depending on the fabric content, it's really going to depend on the fit. So you may need to go up a size, you may need to go down a size, and you may need to just end up using your regular size. Um, so just really keep that in mind. Um, and like I said, I would just order multiple sizes. Returns are super easy through Cezanne. I was actually really impressed with that whole process. So I had no issues with that, but ordering things online can be a little bit tricky. And when a brand is just really good about returns, it just makes it that much easier. The last item I have to share with you guys is a handbag. <laughs> and so this was something that I found at my local consignment store. I used to have several bags from this brand in my collection until I sold them to fund some of my luxury handbag purchases. Uh, this is a brand that I highly recommend if you have no interest in luxury, you're looking for a great high quality leather bag to invest in. The brand I'm talking about is Hobo. They make such high quality leather handbags that are designed amazingly. Like the thought process that they go behind to design each bag just makes a lot of sense. There's always a lot of pockets um, where the bag sits on your body and your shoulder or crossbody, however it's designed. It's just designed very well. There's obviously a lot of thought that goes behind each design. So that's something that I can really appreciate. And the other thing too, is that there's not crazy logos or anything like that. So it is very toned down. So if that's your thing, you may be really interested in this brand. So what caught my eye with this bag is that it is a faux lizard print. So it's actually a suede bag and I'm not really sure how they go about um, printing this uh, design on top. I think it's a leather like layer or something on top. Now, a lot of people try to argue that there's really no difference between buying like a leather handbag and something with, you know, exotic skin or fur. And while that may be true, the biggest difference in my opinion is the practicality of it and the necessity of it. When you purchase high quality leather, um, a high quality leather piece will truly last forever. And a lot of that is evident through really well-made luxury handbags that are vintage and how they can just really withstand that test of time and durability because leather is durable. When it comes to like exotic skins, that's just really not the case. It's really not durable at all. Um, they're actually very delicate and they're not easy to wear and should not be worn on a daily basis. So they're kind of unnecessary. And so for that, I'm really critical of that. It also just kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit if I'm being honest with you, but I can just admire it from afar. I can admire the beauty of it. And I'm not totally opposed to owning an exotic designer bag that is vintage or older or something that was already pre-loved. I would not buy one that's new. I just, I can't do that. I mean, first of all, the price point is insane, but really just from like an ethics standpoint, I just, I can't go there. But anyway, so I saw this bag and I just, I had to have it. I had to have it. So it's faux lizard, it's not real. It is suede, so it is from an animal product. But because it's not real lizard either, it is super durable. And I have been keeping my eye out for a like medium sized tote bag, something that I could, you know, just throw some extra things in if I need to carry more things that day. Nine times out of 10, I really don't need to do that, but um, I don't have any totes like really at all, especially in that size that I could use as like a daily bag if I needed to carry more things. So um, I justified it that way. There were three factors that led me to actually purchasing this bag. One, I had room in my budget, so that's the most important one. 
The second reason I decided to purchase this bag is because it came with its dust bag. Not all bags from this brand come with dust bags, I don't think at least, but this one in particular did. And I'm one of those weirdos who loves a good dust bag, especially if it's the original one that comes with the bag. So that's a selling point for me for sure. And third is that it was new with tags. You guys, so this bag retails for $288. It's not cheap, but it's definitely not, you know, high end designer. It was marked down to the person whoever purchased it paid 218. It was marked down, um, but this consignment store only had it for $56. So that means that they paid this person probably like $15 for this bag, which is kind of insane, but uh, it was a great deal for me, well worth the $56. And so yeah, for right now, um, it works really great for me. And I don't know if there are going to be any more purchases that I make from this brand going forward. Um, I really just kind of have my heart set on a lot of other luxury designer items, but I've also decided that I will purchase something, you know, I have a mixture of high and low in my closet anyway. Um, I want to purchase something because it's really well made and because I love the design, not just because of the brand. Um, and I definitely want to make sure I'm not getting too caught up in brand and just letting that overshadow quality and design for me. And this bag is actually still available on the website. Um, there's only a few left in this particular print. It's like a limited edition print, uh, but they do have it in solid colors as well. And I highly recommend this tote. So even though the shoulder straps are a little bit on the thin side, um, I did have this full of stuff just to kind of like test out, you know, how much that would dig into my shoulder uh, the last time that I wore it. And it was completely fine. So if you're looking for a good tote bag, that's not like super crazy high-end designer prices, you might want to consider this one. And this brand, like I said, does regularly have sales and they do mark things down quite frequently. So I would just wait for a sale and you could probably snag this bag for around 200 bucks. You could also look pre-loved as well, which I always highly recommend. Um, I'm sure you could snag one on the pre-loved market for a great deal as well. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd also love to hear from you guys what are some items that you are looking to add for this spring season coming up in 2022. I can't believe it's 2022 already and that spring is really truly right around the corner. Um, and yeah, I'd just love to hear what you guys are looking to add in your own wardrobes. Until next time, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.